Coming up this afternoon, it's another critical Big East game as the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers get set to meet the Hoyas of Georgetown. The Knights' offense comes from the tandem of sophomore Todd Billett and senior Jeff Greer. The Hoyas have the size inside, led by freshman power forward Mike Sweetney. Georgetown, Rutgers next. Officially, it is called the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. It's better known as the rack site of today's Big East game between the 16th ranked Hoyas and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. A roller coaster ride may be a Clint Eastwood movie. More fitting of what's happened to Georgetown in their last three games. You go back to February 5th, that was the good for the Hoyas. They shot lights out, rolled over Pittsburgh easily. Their most recent game was the bad. They shot it terribly, especially from three-point range. The ugly was in between when they gave up the record number of points against the Providence prior so it has been a roller coaster ride for the Hoyas we welcome all of you on this Saturday afternoon I'm John Sanders along with Mark Plansky and how do the Hoyas fix their recent problem well I guess that makes Craig Eschridge Clint Eastwood but the good the bad the ugly the ugly part of it John has been poor shot selection and poor defense the shot selection Kevin Braswell is the guy behind the arc uh, he's a young man that when he lights it up John there are few better the point guard he's in there 30 minutes a game but against Villanova Early shots led to bad shots. Get the ball down low. These Georgetown Hoyas have a very big front court. Everyone knows about Ruben Boomchee Boomchee, but it's the freshman, Michael Sweetney, who has been there game in and game out this season. Big body and get the moves. Very capable with the dribble in the paint. This game is critical to both teams for the Hoyas in the standings as they get ready for New York City and for Rutgers just to make it to Madison Square Garden. Let's talk about their scoring tandem. The outside offense comes from two sources, Greer and Billet. Well, without the steady diet of beef like Georgetown, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights have to rely upon their little guys. And I'm talking Jeff Greer, the senior, off the window from three when he takes his time, like here, gets set. He can knock down the three as well in the conference, but when he is not drilling it, it's the sophomore point guard, the team's leading scorer, 16 and a half points per game, who has to scoot, because their offense is outside, not inside. These two teams will play twice in the next 10 days, and how can Rutgers combat the size that the Hoyas have inside? Well, Rashad Kent might be the answer. Keep your eye on number 44. Big East basketball is coming up from Piscataway. Big East basketball matchup this afternoon. Of course, I think in uh, mid to late February, they're all important. Let's set the CSFB direct starting lineup. For the Hoyas, Craig Escherich, Braswell, Hunter, Riley, Sweetney, and Boomche, Boomche. Demetrius Hunter just keeps getting better as the season goes along. Craig Escherich has had to kind of ride this roller coaster, tried to keep his team in check when they were going so good at the early part of the season, and now trying to boost them up a little bit that they've gone through some downtime. Just his second full season, the CSFB direct starting lineup for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers and Kevin Bannon. It's Billet Greer, Dabney Sherrod, and Kent. Kent, not that tall, but he is a wide body. He'll eat up a lot of space. Kevin Bannon now in his fourth year at the helm. He's taken his team to a couple of NITs. What he'd really like to do is get him to the Big East tournament this year. That's the goal. Remember, the team that finishes last in each of the divisions doesn't go. A lot of pressure on Boomche. Boomche, Ruben getting a lot of criticism during the games that the Hoyas have lost. And this guy, as a freshman, has been terrific throughout. Jim Burr is our referee. David Day and Patrick O'Driscoll are the umpires. And we are underway. I know, Mark, this is one of your favorite buildings to play in, isn't it? Absolutely. One of the greatest college venues is the rack because it's straight up, folks. On either side of the court, it just goes right to the ceiling. It's always packed, and the fans are very knowledgeable and very loud. Who touched it last? Apparently it was Braswell. He's second in the league in steals. There's a guy by the name of Linehan who uh, is involved in a lot of thievery. How about that Providence game? 103 points against Georgetown. There were games we didn't score 13 points against Georgetown when I played. You're not supposed to do that against the Hoyas. Dabney had no place to go and tried to bounce it off the leg of his defender and turns it over. So we'll start back. Neither team has scored in the first 22 seconds of this afternoon's game. Critical for Rutgers because actually, in truth, they control their own destiny. Should they win out, and that would include an upcoming game with Seton Hall, whom they've already beaten, they would go to New York, and Seton Hall would not. Georgetown, meantime, batting with Syracuse for a bye. 
Oh, it's amazing. Top and bottom in the West. This game has great significance. And the beauty of the argument is they face each other again a week from next Wednesday. Greer got the block. He has the ball at the offensive end. There's Dabney from 15 feet, and he buries it. Well, Dabney has become more and more the polished offensive player. What they need to do is knock down the jump shot because Big Kent has a problem knocking down the perimeter jump shot, but down low, John, it's automatic. And that's where he does most of his scoring. As a matter of fact, he's going to be the all-time leading scorer, uh, field goal shooter in school history. And that's because, not because he's a good shooter, but because he shoots from close in. Well, absolutely. And while he's close in, Dabney setting up the pick and roll. Does a great job here with Jeff Pierce off the dribble. Ooh, pip and pop. Sweetney picks up the dribble. A nice little jump shot. Nothing but nylon. And there's nothing better for a big fella as he nods his head coming back to get your confidence off to a fast start. Here's Sweetney, the freshman from Oxon Hill, Maryland, going to the line. 13.2 points per game as a power forward. That's uh, putting up some numbers. Well, you mentioned about Ruben Bumche Bumche. The press has been, quote, all over him. Ruben is a fantastic player and a very big body. I'm sure he doesn't mind having young Michael picking up the slack because it's time of the year, tournament time, that when they both need to get together in a twin tower format, this Hoya team becomes very physical and very tough. And early on being attended to, I think that's Demetrius Hunter over there on the bench who's being attended to. And a man defense. The Hoya is much bigger physically. A little too much aggression up front. But much bigger, John, and they want to make this a 94-foot game. Up and down, high tempo. The foul is on Riley. It's his first. Anthony Perry is in there right now. As the trainer is still working. It looks like on the left leg or left ankle of Demetrius Hunter. He went down early. Demetrius Hunter with the pallet. And that's why he shoots 60% right there. Absolutely a great. Another pick and roll at top. Georgetown has to communicate off of those screens. Two easy shots. The jump shot in the dunk. And Sweetney ran away from that pass, but Braswell is able to track it down. Two teams split a pair of games. That's an offensive foul inside. On Sweetney, setting the pick down low, and Sweetney picks up his first foul. Well, the pick and roll, let's take a look at the second one there. You can see two defenders on the ball. Nobody rotated down. It's tough getting around the backyard of Rashawn Kent, though, John. You, <laughs> you can't blame any guys for not making it there. Kent takes it all the way in and gets it, excuse me, Sherrod takes it all the way in, gets it in the corner, gets it back, puts up a jumper from the corner, and Rashad Kent, the... Offensive rebound, he hands to Billet. They've got a fresh clock. Two minutes into this game. Kent is a workhorse. So many times when you're bigger than the gentleman you're defending, you will not fundamentally box out. Just because you've got the inches doesn't mean you get the ball. Dabney spins, shoots, scores. Pretty impressed, John. Two in a row, very confident. Four-point lead. That's the start of 6-2. Beginning as far as the Knights are concerned. Mark mentioned they'll play again in another 10 days down in Hoya land. A three for four early shooting for Rutgers. We've got another foul. Well, unfortunately, Dabney, after going two for two, is a little excited on the other end, battling with Bumche Bumche. But here's the pass. The good bounce pass didn't have the baseline, and the nice turnaround. Meantime, we come back to live action, and Perry misses a shot, but it's the Hoyas with the offensive rebound. And Perry will shoot again. This is off the front of the iron, no good. Dabney gets it to Billet. Briefly, they have numbers. And finishing nicely was Greer. He'll go to the line. Nice setup by Billet. Well, I tell you what, John, Billet and Greer, they have passed the ball and received the ball very well. But look at Greer, just keeps hustling, and Billet knew that he was going to drop that dime. Credit Jeff Greer because it looked like an even foot race at the foul line, and he just beats it and converts. That's two early fouls now on Gerald Riley as Greer tries to complete the three-point play and can't do it. But there's Kent again, bumped out of bounds, got a timeout. So Kent, while he was in the air, headed for the out of bounds, called a timeout. That'll take us to our first break with 17.08 remaining to be played in the opening half. You're watching Big East Basketball.
This is DirecTV, the number one digital satellite entertainment service. Now available with the $200 mail-in rebate. Order today and get more channels with 100% digital quality picture and sound. It could cost less than what you currently pay. You'll get access to premium channels like HBO, Stars. And the Hoyas are yet to make a field goal in this game. Their two points came at the line. Dabney has two himself. And Dabney getting the Knights off to a good start with some good inside play. Well, this is what Georgetown hoped to start. Get the ball down low. He already made the good 50-foot jump shot. There he shows you he can go down low with a good turnaround. If he can establish a low-post game with Rashad Kent, then you get Billet and Jeff Greer open looks. They can run with anybody in the conference when they're running inside out. Points in the plane dominated as he misses outside this time. Kent scrambles and Greer there for the offensive board. Another big rebound and Greer in trouble gets a timeout. Burton and Boomche Boomche were squeezing him and he's going to take a 30 second timeout right here. So a good start at least being able to perform inside which is kind of unexpected with the size advantage that the Hoyas have. Well especially coming off the Notre Dame game that Rutgers played Wednesday night when Notre Dame just took over as soon as the ball went up and manhandled the Scarlet Knights. Kevin Ben has to be very pleased with the opening and now he's scribing some perimeter plays. Well, there are a lot of surprise teams in the Big East Conference, BC and PC being the two most prominent, but uh, the talk about who's going to be coach of the year, <laughs> you've got a handful that are right there. Well, Jimmy Beheim, he has to be there every year, it seems, because of the job he does. Michael Bray, of course, with Troy Murphy coming out there, but I tell you, between Timmy Welsh and Al Skinner, I give it to Timmy Welsh, and of course, those two square off tonight at Conti Forum at 7 o'clock. The job Timmy Welsh has done with the Friars, after the state of that program in May of 2000, when they had some problems off the court, and now he's a top for the Big East. Here's Dabney with it, draws a crowd, and inside we've got a three-second violation, the seldom called three-second violation. Jim Burr picked it up, and we'll turn it back the other way. Well, Rashad Kent has a, as I mentioned, a large back porch. A rocking chair was in there for three seconds. Braswell deep in the corner. Inside the Boonche, and he cannot hang on. That's been part of his problem lately, is handling the basketball. He's not playing with the confidence that he had when Georgetown jumped out to the 16-0 record. Part of that's because Sweetley has picked up the press. But you just take the eyes off the ball. You have to catch the ball with your eyes first, then your hands. The scoring is down from last year. Four points a game fewer than a year ago. Of course, there are more options now with Sweetney picking up the pressure. So we haven't seen Lee Scruggs with six foot ten would rather shoot from 22 feet than two feet. And that's just another big body George Town can bring in. And that's another three-second violation. You don't see one a week, much less two in the first half. Rutgers has turned it over three times. The Hoyas twice. They go inside to Sweetney, and he misses the shot. Burton has it knocked away, picked up and put back in that time by Riley. The blatant opportunity on the glass by taking advantage of your height. Just lob the ball down low, John, and keep playing ping pong with it until you get to lay it up and in. It was Anthony Perry that got the basket. Here's Billick at the foul line. That's blocked in the foul call. And the foul will go on Perry, his first. Well, this pace, John, definitely will reward the Scarlet Knights tonight. I mean, Georgetown needs to make some baskets and get out and let Perry and Braswell run the lanes in transition because they cannot physically keep up with Craig Eschler's play. The Scarlet Knights want to walk it up, take some primitive shots, dump it down low. Billet is a good free throw shooter at 75%. Uh, there's another Billet by the name of Jeff who's better, though. Well, Jeff Billet and... Danny Hurley over there on the sidelines. That might be the best shooting duo <laughs> assistant coach in the, com well, the conference in the country. Might be. We have 15.43 remaining to be played. The lead is 6, 10-4, and the Scarlet Knights have it. Stay with us back with more after this. The top recruits. Well, welcome back once again to the rack. It's 10-4. The Scarlet Knights have the early lead over the Hoyas. Big East basketball here. There's another rather important basketball game that will be played here tonight. A matchup of number one, Notre Dame, against the Rutgers women's team. Our game today produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Glad you could join us on this Saturday afternoon. Oh, you're trying to get it going. 
after a couple of disappointing losses, but they played better than most teams on the road, and that's a good sign for them. Only two losses on the road, and this year in particular, the Big East way trips, deal way trips have been unfriendly. And there is a travel called on the Hoyas. Home teams have won 53, lost 27. Compare that to last year, a total of 61 wins for the home team and 43 losses. So it's a dramatic improvement in the home team success. Once again, my partner with the numbers to back up any discussion we may have. Right through the hands of Kent. Burton races the other way off the glass, but he'll go to the line. Well, turnovers are so important to a team like the Rutgers Scarlet Knights because you cannot afford to give up free possessions. When Kevin Bannon comes into a game, he knows that he only has six or seven bodies and a poor pass by Jeff Greer ends up with an easy fast break opportunity for the Hoyas. So they will go to the bench as uh, Dabney has picked up his second foul. Sean Exani will check in. As soon as he gets a chance, Burton at the line, nails the first of two. And Adam Senior from D.C. Exani checks in. Sweetney goes to the bench for the first time as Samnick is in and also checking in off that Georgetown bench is Trenton Hillier, one of the four football players. And he gets a few minutes. It's becoming more and more of a fan. Football playing basketball. Two at the line for Nat Burton. That's the lead to four. Ten to six. We played almost five minutes. Here's Mike Sani. Here's the pressure, John. Obviously trying to keep the ball out of Billet and Greer's hands. Double team step up when it's available and get into the passing lane. Sherrod tried to go back to Billet, had it tapped away, and all of a sudden, there's Kim. Oh. Offense by accident, Coach Greg Estrich did a great job with his team on the press, but the bounce of the ball went to the White Unis. Here's Perry looking inside the Boonche Boonche, and she instead skips it across the hill here. Samnick short with a jumper. Here's Boomche, Boomche laying it in. Well, with Dabney not on the floor, there is an incredible height advantage for the gentlemen in the blue uniforms. Just shoot the ball, John. It's as good as passing the ball to Ruben if you just get it off the glass and let him go get it. He went after that one, got to, gets his first basket of the afternoon. Sherrod hounded by Hillier. They have some wide receivers. They've got the team quarterback also on this team. Here's Greer. Burton jumps out on him. Kent from the foul line. Feeds Sherrod. Puts up his jumper. And rattles it home. First basket tonight for the freshman from Brooklyn. Well, Sherrod can definitely knock down the 15 to 17 foot jump shot. His weakness is when he tries to extend behind the arc. He's just not there as far as perimeter range. Only a freshman, a good contributor. Boomche, Boomche from the foul line with a miss. Kent stays with the rebound and takes it away from Samnick. John, down at this end, when Kent gets the ball at the foul line area, they're going to give him a jump shot, but if you lay off him, he has a good look, good vision of the floor. That resulted in the perimeter shot last time down. Now they'll be on Hillier. He'll pick up his first. They have a special drill that they go through in practice. The D is with shooting free throws, and if you miss, you have to run down and back the length of the court in 10 seconds or less. You miss two, you've got to do two laps. And as uh, Coach Bannon says, we're in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they're the worst free throw shooting team in the league. Well, shooting 58%. Obviously, as we all know, aficionados of the game, Kevin Bannon being one of the best here in the state of New Jersey, at the end of all games, especially in February and March, you can't afford when the clock is stopped to not make the chippies. Here comes Greer inside. Out the billet. Back to Kent. Lost it. Braswell starts back. He's got Hillier on the wing. Hillier takes it in. No place to go. Samnick's jumper from the side is good. Good job by Samnick creating a passing lane, bailing out his partner and knocking down the jump shot. Sherrod comes back. Pretty good crowd on the Saturday afternoon. It's sold out for that Notre Dame Rutgers women's game coming up tonight. And a foul of bump by Romel Ross. And the crowd's getting into it. They thought Braswell may have tapped Bill it up down at the other end. Georgetown over the years, John, you know, you called games way back when I played. They will get away with as much as they can get away with. That is the way the program has built the number one defensive field goal percentage team in the country year in and year out. 
If the referees want to call the quick ones, then you can neutralize that. But if they don't call the foul, you're in for a war and a banger. Bernardo Brown has checked in. I didn't realize it was that long ago that you played. I guess I forgot. It was about three kids and 25 pounds ago, John. Exactly. He had a drive down the lane. Came up a little short. Back to the other end, Ross. Tried to dump it down. Chases it down. He can't really pick up the foul as he bangs into Samuel. That'll be number two on Rashad Kent. You've already got two on Dabney. You can't get all these big guys in foul trouble. It's almost inevitable with the size of Georgetown to get into foul trouble. Kent needed to go straight up in the air. Dabney already on the bench, as you mentioned. You don't have to block the shot. When you're that big and that wide of a body, just go vertical. The referees, more times than not, will not call you until you bring the arm down in an attempt to block the shot. But you know what? We all know that, and yet they still bring that arm down, don't they? Again, I didn't have to worry about that because I never went for it. Wright checks in for Greer. Wright had a career game earlier this year against Syracuse. The Rutgers had a very tough early part of the schedule. In fact, overall, they've got the sixth toughest schedule in the nation if you look up and down. And they lost some close games. They have been fighting and scrapping to get back in there. Sam Nick misses two at the line. Four-point lead for the Knights. This is Greer. And has just one basket. And Billet has two free throws. This has been it offensively for the tandem that does most of the scoring. Brown missed 11 games over eligibility question, but he's back and playing. Billet. The foul's going to go on Perry, I believe. Well, credit Todd Billet for running off the screens. Perry got caught on the screen and just gave a forearm to the Rutgers Carl Knight setting the screen. That's going to put... It's a bonus, then. It's exactly... It's already with 12-14 to go. 17 fouls on Georgetown, just three on the Knights. So he goes to the bench as Burton comes back on for the second time. The guy whose minutes are increasing as the season goes along. The redshirt freshman from Red Bank, New Jersey. John Exani. And he misses the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. And that's really been the story for the Knights. They have struggled with that line. They're going to get a uh, break here and get it back. Boomche, Boomche back in to the bench after a brief court appearance. Wesley Wilson. Shooting is so much a confidence game, John. We touched on the good, the bad, the ugly for Georgetown. The bad and the ugly have been lack of confidence. It's amazing. How can you have a lack of confidence when you start 16 and 0? That is what shooting is all about, and that's all about Rutgers foul. That is number one on Kareem Wright. So the big men inside have already accumulated five fouls. All five of the fouls on the Scarlet Knights have come against their inside players. Boonche, Boonche caught that one. And then he almost traveled as he was being pushed out. Back to Burton. So plenty of time. 20 on the shot clock. Braswell against Billy. Tried to go inside, taken away, and out of bounds. It'll be Georgetown ball. No foul. And Braswell, not good judgment that time. He ran into a trio of Knight defenders. Takes us to a timeout with 11 minutes and 44 seconds remaining. We're still in the first half. Biggest lead has been six for the Knights. They have led throughout. Right now, the Scarlet Knights are on top, 14 to 10. You're watching Big East basketball. And as our score, we still have 11.44 to play first half. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen Big East leaders. And you can see right there among the leaders in rebounding is Kent. He's almost, almost very close to averaging a double-double. Oh, and the leaders for rebounding, for field goal percentage. You know, John, I'm looking at the stat sheet. We have not attempted a three-point shot in this game yet. That's amazing. At a halfway point. I mean, you're trying to get Georgetown 18 and 19 a game on the attempts. Runner won't go. Boomche, Boomche with a foul, and he lays it home. Coming off a game in which they took 32 three-pointers. The problem, maybe they're a little gun shy because they didn't make very many of those. That, that does happen. Again, it all starts with, and ends with the confidence. Here's Wright. Hands it back to Billet. Good job by Rutgers. Breaking the pressure. The initial pressure. Setting up your half-court game. This is where they've had success. Dump it down. Get it back up for the jump shot. Billet so far. No three-point attempts and no field goal. There's only two points came at the line. Here's Brown. Up and under. And that's blocked by Boonche Boonche. Wright went down as he was banged into. So it's five on four. At this end. And there's Agzani coming up with a loose ball. Wright is up. And gets the basketball. Powers his way inside and will go to the line. 
Here's a turn of fortune. Right caught in errant elbow by Ruben Bunte Bunte. Went down for a good four or five seconds. The quick turnover all of a sudden had him at the front of the fast break. That'll be the last time this year. <laughs> He's not the point man on the transition? Is that what you're telling me? Not normally, no. <laughs> but he is huge. 6'9", 285. I think Rashad Kent is big. He is. Kent looks to me like a tight end, somebody's tight end dream player, as big as he is. Wright makes his free throw. And Wright's just a sophomore. And Greer will get his first rest of the afternoon. Sherrod is back on. Ross goes to the bench for the Hoyas as Anthony Perry is back on the court. And two at the line for Kareem Wright. Back to a four-point lead now, 16 to 12. We are nearing the midway point here in the first half. In Piscataway at the rack. Burton with it. This is Samnick. Lost the ball. They scramble for it. Possession arrow is going to get it to the Scarlet Knights. Georgetown very hesitant on the offensive side, John, because they're playing that soft man-to-man -man defense, forcing them to take the three. We are here at Rutgers on the campus of the State University of New Jersey, the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. I'm glad to be working with Mark Plansky once again. I'm John Sanders. Glad you could join us for some Saturday afternoon basketball. Well, it's been a strange, strange year in the conference, hasn't it? It's been very fun, though, I tell you. Talked about New England turning upside down. Connecticut geographically has always been on the bottom, but on the top. Now Providence and B.C. have replaced them. Georgetown undefeated early on. Seton Hall with the big rep early, down with Rutgers at the end. It's been back and forth. Four on two, and Sweetney's fouled. And I thought they were going to blow that four on two opportunity for a minute, but they're going to get a chance at the line. Number 32. Well, Georgetown, John, averages 81 points a game, and you look up at 16 to 12. This is what Kevin Bannon wanted to happen this afternoon at the rack. How can we stop a big athletic running team so far that have the ability to keep the governor cap on the golf cart? And all of Sweetney's points have come from the free throw line so far this afternoon. He's three of three. Burton back to the bench. And Riley is back on. And Gerald, one of the starters, and we have not seen Demetrius Hunter back on the court since he left early with some kind of an injury. We have not had any word on exactly what his problem is. Here's Sherrod with it. Two-point game now. He is on the bench, but he has been out since he went down early. There's Billet running off the screen. And Braswell just sticking to him like glue. He's the first, second, and third option on that scouting report. You have to know where he is. Right from the foul line, bending short, and the rebound is brought out of there by Gerald Riley. The Georgetown will let right and Kent beat them all day long from the foul line. Braswell short with a three-pointer. And that is the first three-point attempt of the afternoon for either team. And a very quick one. Not a good look. Boomchase very active down low. He almost got the offensive rebound. Plenty of time. Give him a touch. Work it around. McSanny has it knocked away, and that'll be number two on Braswell. And Kevin getting in some early foul trouble here. Wilson checking back in for the Hoyas as Boomche Boomche goes to the bench. It's a very basic offensive set that Kevin Bannon will run. A 1-4 set, get the ball to the elbow, on the foul line, to your big guy, and get a lot of movement, John. But because the big guys for Rutgers are not good shooters, Georgetown are not contesting the ball, which allows many opportunities for not only open shots, but Aaron plays and turnovers. As you saw, Karen Braswell, Kevin Braswell make the slap pop. And that was a look also at Hunter, who was on the bench. And other scores, it is a UConn win over Virginia Tech. The Hokies will have their first home losing season in 40 years. Syracuse, West Virginia tied 17-17 early. Iowa State leading Kansas. Play the names, one out of two is all that Hagzani can get at the line, so back come the Hoyas. Down by three. Riley with it. Greer on him. Billet is out for the first time. Sweeney tried to dump it down low. It was touched last by Wright. So it's Georgetown ball in their own basket. There's 21 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Perry. Fans wanted a walk and didn't get it. Braswell, no place to go. Finds Perry. 
and thrown away. You know, turnovers are caused by good defense. We have to credit the Rutgers Carlin Knights. All afternoon, they've been beating Georgetown to the spot, getting the turnover and keeping the game on a slow pace. That is the sixth turnover of the afternoon. And Kentucky in the top 25 action, leading Vanderbilt at Vandy, 35-32 Maryland over Wake. And 17-7, the U of A with the early lead of the Southern Cal. Tipped away and stolen by Samnick. Great recovery by Samnick, a good trap, and then the recovery. Wilson inside, did he travel? Yes. He tried to get readjusted as the defenders kept shooting by him, and he just walked into trouble. The theory was right, John. He expected the contact. It looks like he may have got a scrape on the face. Let's take a look. He thought someone was just going to come up on his back. Oh, there's a little left hand. WWF, a break across the face that was missed by the referees. Wilson will go to the bench as uh, Ruben Boomche Boomche comes back on. Right up, Knights have the ball. They have lead through, led throughout. That one is stolen and then kicked out of bounds by Anthony Parrish. Well, Ronaldo Brown just committed the number one Cardinal sin, taking the ball out underneath the basket to try drop it under their own basket. Call a timeout, throw it long. That was almost an easy layup. One more turnover for the Hoyas than the Scarlet Knights. His right hands it to Billet. They're going to trap him. Tried to step through and stolen. The basket is good. Stolen and laid in that time by Romel Ross. The beauty of the full court pressure, John, you never know when it's going to pay off. Ross will pick up his second foul. That's the price you pay for that pressure. You're going to get some fouls called. Oh, absolutely. And a perfect example is the Providence game. When they did give up 103 points, Providence, Johnny Linehan, a pretty good point guard in his own right, broke the pressure all by himself. Here you can see Billet got the ball back from right, and now the pressure had time to set up the good trap and the turnover. Sherrod, a 57% free throw shooter. And the way that the Knights shoot free throws, fouling them is not a bad idea. No, it's like NC State in 83. You take a look at Kevin, hot and cold. I mean, you'll start the game six and eight thinking, you know, we get a good chance here. Get to the tournament, maybe win a couple of games. And of late, it's been tough. Back to a three-point lead. The freshman, Sherrod, has four. It's 19-16. Sherrod chasing Braswell, and finally, Sherrod is called for the foul. That'll be his first. And it'll take him to the bonus. He's shooting the one and one. And the double bonus the other way. Still eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. The Hoyas have always been a team that commits a lot of fouls. Not a lot of post-game interviews, John, over the years for the Georgetown Hoyas. <laughs> Time is all gone. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Burton and Hillier are getting set to check back in. But first, we've got some free throws. We've got too many players out there for Georgetown. Somebody has to leave. They've got a lot. They've got 17. It's like a traveling football team. When that full court pressure is working, it seems like there's at least six guys out there in the defense. Well, there have been coaches, obviously, who will use six defenders in practice simply to get used to it, right? Well, we did that in the mid-'80s. That was the way we practiced on breaking their pressure. Six and seven on five. It still didn't work, with the exception of one game. That's right. And that was the game, the game that counted, right? I had good seats for that game. I know you did. <laughs> Here's Sherrod. They handle the pressure. And then everybody can get away from him. So he can just handle the ball himself, and he will. He's working against Nat Burton. Just over eight minutes remaining first half. Sherrod keeps his dribble, penetrates, and has it stripped out of way. Back come the Hoyas. Samnick with it. Great recovery by Burton. He got beat off the dribble, but did not give up and had the block. Perry's three comes up short. The rebound to Sherrod. The Hoyas hustling to get back. Billet. You know, he wants to shoot a three, but it's not there. Maxani down the lane. Back to Brown. Now Billet again. 20 on the shot clock. Billet. And we've got an offensive foul. Yes, we do. That'll be number two on Exani. Well, Billick gets no easy looks, and part of the offensive scheme for the Scarlet Knights is to get him and get Greer open. Screens, pass, dribble, penetration. But when you screen, John, you have to remain solid. And you can see a little of the left knee trying to get Billick open on the dribble. Tight little call right there after the, all the physical activity we've had in the first 
12 minutes of this game. Salmon to the line. He is 0 for 2. And takes care of business there. Victor has three points off the bench. Perry, a word with Craig Escherich, who has been with the Hoya program uh, just about a quarter of a century now. Very successful quarter of a century, I might add. Absolutely. Coming in for John Thompson, who obviously built this program last year. Craig Escherich, a lot of complaints from the media this year, a lot of praise. First time this afternoon that the Hoyas have had the lead. They have squeezed on top 20 to 19. We'll be back to Piscataway after this. At this point in the afternoon, both teams have turned the ball over more often than they've made field goals. And that kind of start to this game. Very low scoring. Not one for the artistic, successful archives, but the young man trying to pick up on some pointers. Once again, David Allen, please report to me. Georgetown is on top for the first time in the first 12 plus minutes of this game, dominated by the Scarlet Knights, who have led by six a couple of different times. Right now it's a one-point lead for Georgetown. Sherrod to Greer, who's been quiet as well. Tried to go to Billet, they threw it away. Ten turnovers here in the first half for the Scarlet Knights. Hillier racing back. This is Nat Burton. To Samnick. to Perry. Yes, Boomchi. Boomchi really calling for that ball, but not a lot of motion away from Boomchi. Now the shot clock is going to be a backwards at 10. Boomchi, Boomchi misses everything, but the putback is good by Burton. Somehow he's able to slice in there, get the rebound, and get his first field goal. Very good defense. The air ball resulted in the rebound being where Rutgers did not think it should be. An easy putback for Burton. Very active is Six. Burton on both sides. A 6-0 Hoya run right now, and they lead by three. Here's Sherrod. Well, John, the Rutgers offense is all about the grind. They've only been blown out a couple of times because you can see they love you to sleep, and Axani is able to knock down a little 14-footer. That's his first field goal. He had a nice wide-open look and was able to put it down. Here's Burton inside, stolen by Wright, knocked out of bounds, and it's still Hoya ball. Sweetie checking back in along with Wilson, Braswell. Full scale changes for the Hoyas. They bring everybody back out onto the court, including Romel Ross. So they've changed four players. Wholesale substitution for Georgetown. I'm kind of surprised to unleash Scruggs. There's not got a minute of playing time in a game like this when you have the height advantage. A six foot 11 three point shooter is not a bad option. Wilson travels. That's eight turnovers on Georgetown. His minutes have really gone down this year, and of course, part of that you have to credit to Sweetney, the fact that he is playing so well and playing so many minutes, but if somebody would have told you last year that Scruggs would not be in this game 14 minutes into it, you'd say, well, you're crazy. Well, he came out like a the fire early in the season, knocking down threes from everywhere, but with Sweetney and Bunche Bunche, trying to figure out how their minutes fit in. He's a tough match for another six foot 11 gentleman from the outside. Perry hits the three. It's the first one for either team this afternoon. Threes are a lot easier on transition. And finally, the offensive flow was an easy transition for Georgetown. And Perry can knock him down, especially when his feet are set. 25-21, the Hoyas have the lead. Sherrod, that's blocked. Rears three, short. Axani with a follow. It's too strong. That was the first Rutgers three-point attempt. Braswell spots. This is a two, not a three, but he gets it to go. It's amazing how much more confident a shooter becomes when it's in the flow of the motion of the offense and transition. John, when you pass the ball around half-court style and no one wants to make the move, now the pressure's on you. The last two possessions, Braswell and Perry in the flow, wide open looks, and they can both shoot. The three-pointers have not been a factor so far in this game. The Hoya run right now is 11-2. You can see he is just inside the arc as Braswell buries it. There's only been one three-point attempt in the first half for the Scarlet Knights. Well, that's the type of shot inside the arc by half a foot that Ricky Patino would have your head for back in the old days. Well, here's Perry, as I said, set. Good job knowing the ball's going to come out with a good penetration. 
And with that run, the Hoyas have opened it up by six, matching the six-point lead that the Scarlet Knights had early on. But the Hoyas are taking charge. No pressure this time. As Scarlet Knights are able to bring it up. And right in the middle of this run, he substituted four players all at the same time. that Greer drew a while ago when he got inside. There were like three Hoyas ready to block his shot, which they did. Sandy gets inside, no place to go, back to Greer. Here comes Jeff, off the glass, no good, and he's fouled. Bumped on the way in. Well, Johnny, like his brother out in Pittsburgh, Ricardo, Jeff has the great ability to create with the dribble, and here you can see, jumps in and creates the contact Gets himself to the foul line. And that's three on Braswell, so he's going to have to sit probably for the last 444 of this half as Greer misses. Here come the subs. Dabney back on along with Kent. And Scruggs, you know, we talked about him. I guess they heard you downstairs, and he's in the lineup for the Hoyas. Well, if Braswell sitting down is not as big of a factor for Coach Greg Eschrich as not playing Lee Shrugs. I think in a game like this, you have three 6'10 guys. Whoa, him in. that's going to have to go to Kent. He was actually tipped in by Scruggs. And I would think that Kent, who was the closest to it, is going to get the basket. Hillier with it. Thank you very much for that one. Hillier tried to work his way inside, and now he's going to go to the line. The foul is going to be the first of the afternoon on the sophomore Todd Billett. Well, Trenton Hillier, unlike Braswell when he gets in the paint, is not looking for his shot. And a couple of good up fakes found the big guy wide open, but he got fouled before the play could finish. Looking for his first point. They were averaging about a point a game in the Hoyas. Now 10 of 13 at the line. Kent kept it alive, and Dabney has it, and a foul called on Hillier. Great hustle by Kent. Georgetown always active with the hands. Today, a couple of easy calls for the referee for the slaps. That is two fouls now on Hillier. The fouls are really mounting for the Hoyas. The Knights have been in the double bonus since about the 12-minute mark, right? Since the ball's gone up, it seems like, John. <laughs> it seems like it. Dabney to the line. 62% free throw shooter. And he hits that one. But again, the tempo is really the number one priority for Coach Estrick. As the game opened up, he called uh, Kevin Bannon called a quick timeout. Two jump shots. Hold on, fellas. We don't want this type of tempo. Slow it down. Get to the foul line. Let's grind it out. The Warriors have already used 12 players in the first half. The Charlotte Knights have used eight. Scruggs gets it back outside. And that three-pointer is off the mark. Kent rebounds the Perry miss. And back come the Knights, down now by three. 27-24, four minutes to play, first half. Well, they've done a good job, the Scarlet Knights have, with Kent and Dabney on the bench with the foul trouble early in the first half to be only down by three. Kevin Band has to be pleased. And that's a first step travel called on Dabney. They are all over Jeff Billet. Every time he touches the basketball, you see the shooting percentage. The Knights' seven percentage points better than the Hoyas, but the Hoyas have the lead with 3.46 to play first half. Georgetown 27, Rutgers 24. We are back to the rack here in Piscataway. Three-point lead for the Hoyas. We remind you that our game this afternoon is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television, Incorporated. The house is loaded with football recruits. We'll talk more about what Greg Schiano has done and is trying to do with the Knights as we get a chance as far as the Rutgers football program is concerned. Here's Hillier inside. Sweetney powers it up and in. Sweetney's first field goal. He has six points. The other four coming at the line. Rutgers running a 1-2-2 zone. That means the middle of the paint, John, is wide open. And Sweetney, as we have seen over the last number of weeks, very comfortable with the one dribble turnaround jump shot either way from inside the paint. Off the Dabney screen, and they are switching every time. Kent nice. gets it to Dabney. That's what you got to do. You've got to look back inside. If Kent and Dabney just stand high-low with no motion, it's easy to not cover them, as I mentioned, because they're not a threat to shoot it. But if you move, you have to at least defend. Perry was able to 
track down his errant pass. Scrub jump hook, good. Well, that's what I was talking about. This guy at six foot eleven with the long arms has a great touch. That was a beautiful jump hook. 31-26. Team has enjoyed a six-point lead, and Hillier tracking down. Billet has gotten in his back pocket, and Hillier has picked up three fouls already. Well, this scrub at six foot eleven, John. You know, very thin, very wily. He can be a game-leading rebounder when needed. But check out the touch. I mean, that's not as easy as it looks. The little jump hook, and he can step out at 20 feet as well. And the Scruggs last year averaged in double figures. He is down about three points a game. So things change as the makeup of the team changes. Billet at the line misses. And Todd isn't hitting, and Billet was not, has not even attempted a field goal this afternoon. That's amazing to me. With 2.44 to play in the half. Well, again, he is all over the first page of the Georgetown Scudder report. Do not let him get the ball. Let somebody else beat us, and that's why he's at the foul line, because Hillier tagged him, grabbed his uniform coming off the screen. Three points all at the line. Here is Scruggs. Burton goes inside. Ross bending, bending off. Into the hands of Kent. Rashad Kent will hand it to Sherrod. Seven rebounds now for Rashad Kent, heading for another good afternoon in the rebounding category. Got to be careful with the foul situation. Though. Here's Dabney. Well, they thought about that little 15-footer. They jumped out at him, and he turns it over. Good job by Sweetney and Scruggs getting back and forth, recovering on the defensive switch. Burton to Sweetney. Knocked away inside by Billet in the hands of Dabney. Here's Kent. Oh, nice. Good push to Greer, and he lays it on. Nice speed. But Kent had that tap pass in his head for a couple of steps, and a great pass by Billet gets the left. Rock him. Here comes Scruggs inside with his jumper, bending, bending off. Rebounded by Greer. A two-point ball game. Back from the Knights in the final two minutes, first half. They're on their feet at the rack. When Georgetown goes through the bad and the ugly, it's because of quick, poor, selective shots. That was a good example. Sludge with that advantage, only four seconds off the clock. Dabney gets inside, tried to go to Kent. Once again, they wound up with the two big guys down low and only one defender. Well, you know why, John? Because of the attention on the perimeter. Don't let Greer and Billick get the ball. The big guys are wide open. At the half, we will take a look at the Big East wire for this afternoon. Break down the brackets at the upcoming AT&T Big East Championships. And, of course, sort out the stats and highlights from the opening 20 minutes of basketball. Here's Greer. Good job by Kevin Bannon taking the starting. Two big guys out, not to pick up a third. <laughs> well, it took him a long time to attempt his first field goal, but it's a big one because it gives the Knights the lead. Ross, offensive foul on Ramel Ross. Well, credit right. He comes in for Dabney and Kent, and as we mentioned earlier, he didn't go vertical. He stood there with his hands up in the air and gets the charge. He'll bill it down the other end, John. Couldn't get a shot off within 20, so he backed up the 24 and knocks it down. He was way outside. It's a 6-0 Scarlet Knight run. Four of those points coming from Billet, including his first three-pointer of the afternoon. Good job. You take a look at Wright taking the charge. Rubin, get out of the way. Create a passing space, but look at this. That's six feet behind the arc. Talk about your range. He walks into the athletic center, and he's a dangerous lethal shooter. to play in the half. The Scarlet Knights are back on top, 32-31. to 31. And another reminder about that AT&T Big East Championship. It begins with those first-round games on March the 7th, continues through Saturday, March 10th, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Limited tickets are still available. Here are the ticket numbers, 212-465-MSG1, or call Ticketmaster. Technical foul, John, assessed on Georgetown many times as a result of the defender on the ball reaching over and breaking the plane. We didn't see it from opposition halfway up the stands at the rack. I couldn't hear it either because of the fans, but I think that's probably why Billet is shooting the technical foul shots. Three of five is Todd at the line. You take a look, Todd, pointing at 
his feet. There's the touch. Well, I like that. He baited him. He put the ball over. He said, come on, here, touch it. Oh, technical. I'll go to the other side, but he did not knock it down. Is that a personal foul in that situation? It's not. It's a team technical then? Okay. Otherwise, it would have been the fourth foul on Ross. One of those assessed to the bench. Some poor assistant coach just picked up another career technical foul. <laughs> Sherrod hands to Billy. Boomche Boomche jumps out on him. You've got to have the size advantage someplace if that's happening. Billy spots for three. It's short. Gets it back to Greer. Well, Billy's working so hard for his shots at the free throw in the open look. The not flowing naturally, but credit the Knights staying with the rebound. Out of 10 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock as Billet has it. Here's an open oh. all alone. He missed it. He missed the wide open layup, gets it back. Baseline jumper bending, no good. Here's Kent again. One more chance, no. Finally, the Hoyas get the rebound. My goodness, there's a lid on that sucker. That is the possession Kevin Bannon will be talking about. Many opportunities. Oh. You do not see Bill miss a wide open layup very often, but he's surprised, as were we. We were the big guys to throw it away. There's nobody there. Closing seconds of the half. Three-pointer on the way by Perry. No good. Out of bounds, and we have finished the first half. The Scarlet Knights have the lead by one. 32-31. Rutgers will head to the locker room on top of the Hoyas, and they have been very effective when they have been ahead of the half. They are 8-0. We'll start our halftime coverage from Piscataway after this. The tribute last Sunday, as a matter of fact, right here to the brothers Jeff and Ricardo Greer as they squared off for the sixth time in their collegiate careers. Russ Rutgers was hosting Pittsburgh in the game. Jeff and Ricardo went back and forth, scoring against each other as the game wore on. But it was Jeff and his Scarlet Knights who had the last laugh as Rutgers came away with a 20-point victory in the game. The Greer brothers moved into first place on the list of points scored by brother tandems in Big East games surpassing Bill and Mickey Curley of Boston College. And as we take a look at their respective career numbers as they stood after the game, it may have been Jeff who got the win, but Ricardo has the edge in personal career numbers. Of course, that will eventually be wiped out by the Billet brothers. We have more to come. We're going to look ahead to Madison Square Garden and the upcoming AT&T Big East Championships. So stay with us. We'll return with more Big East basketball right after this. It is still halftime, and the Knights have a 32-31 to 31 lead. We welcome all of you back to the rack. We get settled in for the second half. I'm John Sanders, along with Mark Plansky. And it was the Scarlet Knights, Mark, who got off and running early, thanks to the play inside of number five. You Very did, Dabney. efficient first half. Nine minutes for the big fellow, three for four from the line. A good offensive strategy by Kevin Bannon. Started the game down low, and it grinded it out. Never let Georgetown get into that transition. Dabney, John, not only a jump shooter, but a little post player, as we saw in the first half. Well, it was Dabney who got him off to the early lead, and the, uh, the Knights had a couple of six-point leads early in that ballgame. Very few three-point shots attempted or made. Georgetown has one, and Rutgers has one. And we're going to take a look at Perry's making the only three-point complete shot, as you mentioned. But on the transition, second half, let's go Georgetown and Rutgers. Slow it down and keep this guy and Dabney in the game out of foul trouble. The teams are back on the court. We'll have all of the stats from the first half when we return with more from Piscataway, New Jersey, Rutgers, and Georgetown. about ready to start the second half of play. We showed you some of the highlights from the first half. Let's sort it out statistically. Neither team shooting the ball especially well, and the three-point shooting was not a factor for either team in the opening half of play. Well, no, Kent for Rutgers on this side, Sweetney and Bomche Bomche on the other side. Down low in the paint, nothing but red paint on the bottom of the sneakers, but let's take a look at them. You've already mentioned the field goal percentage. Second chance points, Georgetown 10 to 2. That is what we touched on earlier. Just shoot it. If you miss it, go get it. Turnovers just about even. Seven steals in the first half for the Hoyas. They average 10 steals a game, so that, of course, picking your pocket is their specialty. But nobody really lighting it up. We talked a lot about Greer and Billet. They combined for only 10 points in the first half, and Billet didn't even have a field goal attempt until the closing minutes of the first half. There are the leading scores, Sweetney with six. 
Dabney with seven, so not much there. As a matter of fact, Sweetney, six points, four of those came at the line. He has only one field goal in the game. We did not see Demetrius Hunter after the first minute of the game. And Hunter, a great athlete on that perimeter team for Georgetown. That hurts in a game like this, John, when you want to get out and run. Check out the standings. Remember, it's East Division. It's the West Division here in the East with Providence and Boston College playing for first place tonight, followed by St. John's at 7-5, and five, then Villanova. UConn down at 5-6. and six. Huskies have not won a game on the road. Tech did lose at home this afternoon to Connecticut, who finally won on the road. Now on the west of the Big East, it looks like this. Notre Dame, Syracuse, Georgetown. Of course, you've already talked about Syracuse and uh, Georgetown battling for that other by position. Rutgers scrapping with uh, state rival Seton Hall just to get to Madison Square Garden. Oh, absolutely. Talk about a New Jersey rivalry on the offseason. You don't stop for a moment. If you don't think Tommy Emmerger and Kevin Bannon will leverage whichever one doesn't make to the Madison Square Garden Big East Tournament, you can rest assured in the summer AAU camp that might be mentioned. Perry glazed that one off the glass, a la Mark Plansky. <laughs> yeah, going for the net, hit the glass, tell the scorekeeper it's three either way. It is three, his second. He has both of the Hoyas three-pointers, and Georgetown immediately takes the lead to start the second half. Greer with it. Now Kent. Hands it back to Jeff for his three, and he hits that one. Oh, well, the three-pointers weren't there in the first half, but already two in the second half. Rashad Kent just told Jeff Greer with the dribble, take the shot, I'll get you open. He laid a great screen on him. Knights go back on top by one. By the way, his brother Ricardo is here. Pittsburgh is not playing this weekend, won't play again until they play Rutgers again at home next Saturday, and Braswell hits two. Already the second half opening with a little more enthusiasm up tempo than the first half grind. Braswell getting on with a perimeter jump shot as well. 36-35, the Hoyas have the lead. We've had a couple of lead changes already here in the second half. Three as a matter of fact. Here's Kent. Tried to go to Billet. Perry on the break. Well, Rashad Kent made two mistakes in one play. A bad pass, a forced pass. He was open for the jump shot. Bunche, Bunche with the steal. But John, to make matters worse, he did not get back. He stood and watched as Georgetown ran down on a transition for the easy layup. Well, he is now up by three. Kent is fouled by Bunche, Bunche. What you have here is the Georgetown Hoya defense on the perimeter playing denial and Bunche Bunche and Sweetney playing physical on Kent and Dabney. If I'm the Rutgers team, I don't want to go off the screens. I want a fake coming off the screen and get into the passing over. Here's Greer. Back to Dabney off the glass. Too strong. Sweetney simply hands it to Braswell. Kevin on the move around. Sherrod lost it. Four on two. Here's Greer. And he'll go to the line. You know, John, that was a great job by Todd Billett taking the extra dribble, not just giving the ball up immediately to Jeff Greer. One extra dribble right there makes Sweetney defend. One extra second cannot get back to Jeff Greer and has to foul. Good view here. Look at Sweetney. Not sure what's going to happen. By the time he closes, he has to foul. And Greer gets the roll on the free throw. So just like that, Jeff's in double figures with 10. We're tied at 38. Well, Ricardo saw the halftime feature. He mentioned it to Jeff and said, let's get some more points. So if you take a look, at, he'll be in the crowd cheering him on. We'll get a shot of him in a minute. We've got a double foul on Boomche, Boomche, and Dabney, I believe. Yes. So it'll be the second on Boomche, Boomche, and for Dabney, it's three. There is Ricardo, or Ricky Greer, as he is known to the faithful from Washington Heights, New York. And they were here in mass. I'm sure there'll be a big group in Pittsburgh next weekend. Out of bounds. Touch last by Greer. It is strange, though, this late in the season, the Pittsburgh would have eight days between games, isn't it? Well, it depends on the scheduling. When you're in August, you look at the quirks. Eight days off, yes. But how about, let's talk about Michael Jarvis and the scheduling quirk he has. Duke University to tomorrow. <laughs> and then Syracuse, Georgetown, Villanova, and UConn coming into the tournament. We're just a little uh, tester to get him ready for Madison Square Garden. I think you'd rather have eight days off, John, instead <laughs> of that schedule. 
Greer working on Burton. Gets it to Dabney, gets a new dribble. Blocking foul. With a double foul again. Both 44s are going to pick up a foul. That'll be Kent, his third. And Boomche Boomche has picked up three fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. You can see the frustration of Kevin Bannon. He can ill afford to get a double foul. Basically, all this was was a one for you, one for me down the other end. Let me take a look down low. Boomche Boomche doing a great job trying to stay on top. He's holding him from behind. Kemp trying to get the position. And Jimmy Burr, the veteran referee, saying that's enough, boys. Perry's three is on the way and good. Perry hits his third three-pointer. And Anthony has 13 points. Closing in on the season high. His season high is 16. He's got 13 this afternoon. And the Hoyas lead is three. Well, especially now with three fouls on trying to dance down there, John. Just let the physical game continue and play your own offensive game. Greer's three, short. Kent, the offensive rebound and a foul on Samnick. Samnick wanted a push. Samnick wanted a push-off call, but he's going to pick up his first foul. When you are blessed with such a wide body of Rashad Kent, you can uh, move people out without using your hands. That's exactly what he did on the weak side. Watch him right there with his butt. With the big hip, moves Samnick out, and he said, "Hey, who pushed me? It had to be three guys, not one." It's a, it's the frame of three guys. This is not where Kent wants to spend his time, however. Now, when I don't have any money in my pockets, I come to Rutgers and ask him to shoot free throws for, for a dollar per, and I go out and get my sandwich. He is shooting 37% at the line. And much better. So he's one of two, the junior from Fairmont, West Virginia. He's had some of his best games against West Virginia this year. Fairmont is very close to Morgantown, a few miles down the road. 41-39, the Hoy is leading. Samnick against Kent. Wilson's jumper in the lane, too strong. Somebody pushed off. Was it Wilson? No, it was Samnick. And Craig Escherich is going to get a technical foul. Oh, I knew he was getting close. Foul is on Samnick, and the technical is on Escherich. There are certain veteran referees in the country you cannot boss around. Jimmy Burr is one of them. Teddy Valentine, of course, has made a national claim to be one of them as well. There's no need to bother Jimmy Burr because he never listens to anything <laughs> you right. say or Craig Escherich says. Well, he listened to you before the game, and that's the first time, right? <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> Billet gets his first point of the second half, has seven in the game. He is four of six. Make it five of seven at the line. Eshrick making the point simply that, hey, guys, we don't need the gentleman from the footlocker to play today. We need our team to play. Let the boys go. A lot of whistles in the first 25 minutes of this game. Well, back-to-back -back double fouls. You rarely see a double foul called at all. And to have back-to-back -back double fouls called is almost as unheard of as the back-to-back three-second violations. <laughs> almost always a statement by a veteran referee to just tell everyone, hey, slow down, play the game. Dabney looking for a shot from about 18 feet. And Dabney gets it. He's got nine points. Two-point lead for the Scarlet Knights. Dabney and Kent playing along with the crowd's enthusiasm. Maybe easy to pick up a fourth foul if they get a little too aggressive. It's a four on two. Sherrod to Greer. Fourth in and a blocking foul. He'll go to the line. Greer hit the deck hard. Well, John, even though Jeff missed the shot, it was a great job going to the front of the rim, avoiding the offensive foul. Many players would just get that pass and go and use the glass. Take a look. Jeff running the left side. He gets it and goes sideways. Close to drawing the charge, but avoids it. Third foul on Perry. And Greer gets the roll. He's made two in a row at the line. Now has 11. That's 18 fouls already in the second half on Georgetown. We're not even five minutes into the second half. Well, as you already mentioned, 12 guys have played, five fouls each. 60 fouls. Okay, we have plenty to go. <laughs> yeah. Greer gets two at the line, has a dozen in the game. The lead is four. 
for the Scarlet Knights. They have their biggest lead of the second half, and we have our first timeout of the second half. 15.43 to play. Scarlet Knights are back on top. We'll be back. You're watching Big East Basketball. Five forty-one. Scarlet Knights, for their faithful, have the lead over the Hoyas of Georgetown. These teams will play again in 10 days in Georgia, Georgetown in Washington, D.C. There is Todd Billett. Shooting percentages are dead even for the two teams. Both shooting exactly the same, 44% for the afternoon. As even as it can be, right, Mark? Unfortunately, we're about to change with the next shot. Kent with a steal. He reached around Sweetney that time. This game has really had no rhythm, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned it, the field goals are exactly the same, but they've come from all over the place and with no continual flow whatsoever. You're right. Here's Dabney looking for his offense. Bangs the jump hook off the iron. Here's Perry. He's been very effective for the Hoyas this afternoon. Gets in the lane, puts up a runner, and nails it. Very nice left-hander. Finger roll. How about Perry with 15 points to lead the way for the Hoyas? The lead is 2, 45-43. Knights on top. We played just over five minutes second half. Here's Billet. Passes on the three as Braswell jumps out on him, as he has all afternoon long. Here's Sherrod inside the arc with his jumper. Back irons it out to Braswell. Numbers for the Hoyas, five on three. Sweetney up to Burton, knocked away and out of bounds by Phillips. Good recovery by Todd Phillips. Very good recovery. Cannot bring the ball down low because it allows the little guy to play D as well. We are here in the Lewis Brown Athletic Center, affectionately known and not so affectionately by the opposition as the rack, and that's a push off on Dabney. And Dabney picks up his fourth foul. And there was no question he pushed him in the back. You know, John, if it wasn't such a rocket high pass, it probably would not have been called because it was a great catch by Rubin. He had to extend back, and the elbow from Dabney accentuated and got called for the foul. Exani will take his place in the lineup. Braswell gets it out to Sweetney. That's an, uh, is that an offensive foul or defensive foul? It's going to be a defensive foul. And so that is the foul. Well, and again, he's got four. Wow. That's trouble for the Scarlet Knights as Kent picks up the foul. I have to agree with Coach Kevin Bannon. I thought there was a reach-in by Todd Billett. I will admit that was one heck of a Hollywood flop by Kent. But probably a better no-call than a fourth foul on both the Bannon starting front court. That means that Wright will go to the scorer's table and check into the lineup. Kareem Wright will have to come on for Kent. Sweeney's done a good job at the free throw line, hitting all five of his chances. That's seven points for the freshman. There's the swap. Kent to the bench with four fouls. And he'll set right next to Dabney. Between them, eight fouls. Sweeney, a pair at the line. Well, Excuse me, John. You marked this on your scorecard. 14-25. Both guys on the bench. Tie score. If I am Craig Edrick in the Hoyles, I want to run it away right now. Here's your opportunity. Rice kicks it over to Sherrod. Tried to go baseline on Boomche Boomche. Now has to back it out. They feed right. Billet. Burton pounding him right now for the Hoyles. Now they've got the double team and throw it away. That's 14 turnovers now for the Scarlet Knights. And coming into this game, that's their average, 14 a game. And they already have 14. We still have 14 minutes to go, basically. Well, they list Todd Billet at six feet tall. That would mean John Sanders would have a six feet tall listing as well. So when you get a good double team, you create the turnover, and Ruben makes it A. Six points now for Boomche Boomche, and the Hoyas seesaw back on top by two. We're down 45-41, but it scored six unanswered. Now you need to step it up and give me the ball attitude that Jeff Greer can develop and has shown throughout the year. He's the one guy that can create his own offense. Greer with a shot. Comes up short. Tried to get it back, but Braswell brings it away for the Hoyas. Georgetown with the lead and the ball. 
Sweetney working hard inside gets the basket. That's double figures for Mike at 10. Kevin Bannon waiting for the 12-minute TV timeout. It could very well be a long one minute. Finally, the Georgetown beef paying off. Well, that's because the beef for Rutgers is on the bench. Dabney and Greer, both with four fouls. Sherrod looks to Billy. Puts up a long jumper and drills it. It's a three, and he shot that one under pressure. The 11 for Billet, his second tray of the afternoon. What a great shot. That was not easy. The up fake then to go back to where you came from with a quick one dribble and knocked it down. That was on a frozen rope. Sweetney spinning on Axani, leans in. Here comes Greer. Scoops. Misses the shot. Axani over the back commits the foul. Jeff decided to take it all the way that time and that's number three on Exani. Great demonstration of Jeff Greer's athleticism. He probably did not expect to be as wide open, John, with that finger roll. Just spun it off. Too much English off the glass. Scruggs will check in for Sweetney for the Hoyas. Well, here's a take a look. A, a good fake, and the one dribble escape was so quick, the defender did not think he was going to shoot. And as I mentioned, knocked it down. I didn't think he was going to shoot either. He has been up faking all afternoon, and now it's time to pull the trigger to keep this a close game. Here comes Braswell, cut off as he tried to go baseline into the lane. Scrubs from outside. That rattles out. Greer has the rebound. But it's stolen back from behind. Burton got it back to Braswell. Braswell to the baseline. Cut off by Wright. Tapped away. Here come the Scarlet Knights. Three on one. Behind the back. Greer. This time he finishes. But the left behind the back. Todd Dillon. The floor general, second time he has run that fast break with tremendous efficiency. And the Knights have the lead again. 50 to 49, 11 and a half to go. The foul is on Kareem Wright, his second. Beautiful feed. It is not a shooting foul because it's just the 16 foul. So we do have a timeout with 11:28 remaining to be played. A one-point lead for Rutgers. We've got a lot more to come from Piscataway. You're watching Big East basketball. Knights lead by one. 11 and a half to go. Let's take a look at our Beck's beer game summary. And this has been a very tight game throughout. Biggest lead has been six, briefly, for both teams. We've also had eight lead changes and four ties. And you can see Sweetney doing a good job at the free throw line for his team. The Knights have turned it over 16 times, and Greer has had a good second half, 10 points so far in the second half. Very good second half, getting out in transition a few times, and with 16 turnovers and only up by one, or should I say still up by one, and the big guys on the bench just keep it close. Braswell for the lead. That high pick and roll, John, you have to communicate on the defense. That time Todd Billett tried to go behind and then realized that Braswell can knock it down. The split second cost him. Great shot by Braswell. Ninth lead change as Billett has it. Inside all alone, Axani lays it in. Ten lead changes. Great pass. It seemed like the whole defense ran out after Billet and left Anzani wide open, and he used the left. Here's Braswell. Back in there is Gerald Riley. He's not played too much in the second half. They go inside. Boomche, Boomche. Traveled, yes. During that last time out, I was watching Greg Schiano, who is the new head football coach of Rutgers. He's still up in the crowd in about the third row from the top in the end zone. They have brought in 160 of the top juniors in high school football in the state of New Jersey, and they're off to a great start. you got to go up a little bit higher to get to where Greg is because he's all the way to the top. But those are some of the players that they brought in here, and what a great job they've done so far recruiting for the Scarlet Knights football. 7,302 for the game. Another big one tonight is the Georgetown women and the Rutgers women will battle. That one is sold out. Brown is back on the court and has the ball. Penetrates, scoops, missed the shot. That's going to be a foul on right. He went over the back. Well, I said Georgetown women, didn't I? It's the Notre Dame women who are number one in the country, of course. 
That's the third foul on Kareem Wright. And of course, the Scarlet Knights women's basketball team made it to the Final Four last year under C. Vivian Stringer. Although, they're playing tonight. They had a two-and-a-half-hour practice this morning. <laughs> Vivian works her troops pretty hard. They were here when we came in, and they were not walking through either, folks. They were a full-out practice. Virginia Tech falling at home to UConn. The Huskies finally winning on the road. West Virginia surprising Syracuse in Morgantown. It's a tough place to play. Iowa State has defeated Kansas State. And Kentucky rolls on, beating Bambi. Maryland over Wake Forest. A pair at the line for Scruggs. He's a good free throw shooter. He's made 19 out of 22. Just hasn't had many opportunities. He has given us our 11th lead change. The Hoyas are back on top. Scarlet Knights have it. Brown's three-pointer. Rattled out. Wright had it. Batted away. Picked up by... No, it's out of bounds. It's knocked out of bounds by Wilson. He's playing with Scruggs. Burton is in there, Ross is in there, and of course Trenton Hillier is in there right now. This is the five on the court for the Hoyer. Who have a one-point lead. Billet. Gives it back to Greer. Burton all over Billet. Starts to move into the lane, comes to a jump stop, puts up his jumper, bending, bending off. Here comes Burton with a rebound. That Syracuse West Virginia score obviously very big for Georgetown. We already touched on it. Georgetown can find a way to squeak out the victory, and the Morgantown gentlemen beat Syracuse. You've got a tie for that last bye in the West Conference of the Big East for the tournament. I would have to say the Coliseum is probably rocking this afternoon, isn't it? Scruggs misses the three. Agzani has a rebound. Fans wanted the foul call, didn't get it. Here's Billet. All the way down the lane with a floater, won't go picked up and in. Beautifully done by Wright. Green Wright is all over the court. The big fella says, hey, I know the front court and the starters are down with four each. What? Hey, I'm 285. Get out of my way. I can do it myself. 12 lead changes. Timeout for Georgetown. The Hoyas will take a 30-second timeout with 8.55 to play. This one continues to be nip and tuck. It has been from the beginning. Again, Todd Billet is very smart with the basketball. High off the glass. Everyone, John, went for the block shot because the little guy had the layup. And credit this gentleman. Green goes right after and taps it in. That was a huge basket. Our game today produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. The Rutgers leading by a point at 54-53. We've been tied four times, and neither team has been up by more than six. I think this means, Mark, that we're going to have to stay till the very end this afternoon, don't you think? The bitter end. The Big East is really coming down to a great finality of the regular season as you take a look at points in the paint. Surprisingly, even the credit Kareem Wright and obviously the starters was hanging with the bigger bruising. Georgetown Hoyas. Braswell back on the court. Perry's three. Comes up a little short. Maxani has the rebound. And to Greer. So many times, John, as you take a look at the rebound numbers, as Rutgers again taking care of business on the glass, surprising as well before the game started. When you diagram a play in a timeout like Craig Essers just did, you're a little too excited to shoot it. Perry should not have launched that shot. Greer short with his jumper from the side. Here's Braswell. The stop and pop. Got it. So it's the Hoyas back on top. That's 10 now for Braswell. He's in double figures. Joining Sweeney is the double figure scorer. Have to declare on the ball when you're defending. They let Braswell with a couple of free bounces from 14 feet, and he shows you the silky smooth jump shot. Inside to right, working on Boomche, Boomche, and he's fouled. Boomche, four fouls all in the second half. He's gotten four fouls in 12 minutes. When you take a look, disbelief on Ruben's face. As you mentioned, four quick ones. Jimmy Burr made the call. He was behind both Bumche, Bumche, and Kareem Wright. He was to say somewhat obstructed view behind those two young boys. Maybe he just heard the bodies. Three of three at the line for Wright. He has come up big off the bench. As he started his share of games, especially early in the season. Bumche, Bumche goes out. Samnick comes back on, so the Hoyas go a little bit smaller. And he gets them both. Wright with six. 
And we have had 14 lead changes right now. It is the Scarlet Knights' turn to be on top. This one gave Georgetown the lead, but now it's Rutgers by one. 56-55, Scarlet Knights have the lead. As we come back, let's take a look at our BMW ultimate drive of the game off a terrific feed from one Mr. Todd Billick. Well, you know, the ultimate drive, the BMW, John, you can go right or you can go left. Watch the vision, a little boop behind the back, and the second time Jeff Greer filled the lane, that time with success. 14 lead changes so far in the game this afternoon. We welcome those of you coming from the Syracuse game on ESPN News to our game here. I'm sure Morgantown excited about the job that their team is doing. And here are the Scarlet Knights battling the Hoyas. They'll meet again 10 days from now in D.C. Sweetney puts the Hoyas back on top. That's a dozen for Mike Sweetney. Very comfortable, huh, John? Down low with the dribble. And when you try to attack it, he's so strong, you can't take the ball away from him. 57-56, the Hoyas are on top. It was a one-point Scarlet Knight halftime lead. Each team had a six-point lead in the first half. Billets three, and he nails it. Well, he is that was a tough shot. Taking the quick one dribble, and it is surprising the defense, as you just mentioned, not expecting them to go up after the update. For those of you that not, did not see the first half, Billet must have updated 20 times. Now he's nailing the three-point shot. Sweetney for the tie. Axani a rebound as he brings it out of there and finds Billet. Two-point lead for the Scarlet Knights. They have the basketball. Look at all the lead changes we've had. And here comes Braswell for a tie. He'll go to the free throw line. Axani picks up his fourth foul. He is the third Knight with four fouls. Well, Braswell, who was two of two from the line in the first half, will get his first chance in the second half, a chance to tie it up. Sixteen lead changes, as we showed you, and what Braswell is looking for here is our fifth tie of the afternoon. That's part of it. Well, which obviously favors Rutgers as you look at the Georgetown bench. Rashad Kent coming back in with four fouls. Dabney on the bench. The records with four fouls. If either one of these two big fellas pick up the fifth, advantage obviously switches over to the Hoyas. Well, they went almost eight minutes without their two big guys, and they held their own while they were on the bench. It's tied. Strategic substitution. Kevin Bannon figuring he has about three minutes of playing time before the next TV timeout. Try to get some free, non-fouling minutes from his big fellas. Here's Wright outside. He's on the court with Greer right now. Dabney is not out there. He also has three fouls. Here's Brown. No place to go. Feeds Greer. Working hard, trying to spin inside, and kind of just a touch foul that time on Burton, his first. And that Burton will get up and defend, and he is very physical and very quick. He's asking the referee, I can bang with my forearm, right? Isn't that what you guys taught us in November? Isn't that what they said when they came around for our little clinic? Greer to the line. He's not had a lot of success there. He missed both chances in the first half. In the second half, Rutgers now is 8 out of 10. Georgetown has had all six of their free throw opportunities in the second half. Well, we touched on it. Rutgers only shooting 58% from the free throw line for the season. They've had good success this afternoon, but it's in tight games like this afternoon when you can ill afford to miss the freebies when the clock is stopped. Greer has 15 points. Todd Bell has 14. It's a one-point lead for the Scarlet Knights, 60 to 59. Sweetney spinning against Wright, puts it up off the glass and in, and he'll go to the line. Mike Sweetney, as a freshman, never forces the offensive shot. He let the defense get out of the way, and then he used his back porch to create some room. Let's take a look. A good spin move there. He catches right off balance, and that's the third time he's been able to kiss it off the glass. Big guy with soft touch. And that is four on right. Sweetney completes the three-point play. He is seven of seven at the line, and he's got 15 points. And four different Scarlet Knights players have four fouls. Georgetown's lead is two after the three-point play. So that is another lead change. Bill to tie. Too strong. Perry has the rebound. 
here comes Braswell. Blocked by Wright. Samnick gets it back and gets the roll. That was a great job by Kent not committing his fifth. Wright went with the block shot, but John, everyone stood around. It was an easy putback for Georgetown. And the Hoyas had their biggest lead of the second half up by four. The Knights had a four-point lead earlier. Greer's three, cuts it to one. Great offensive set. Kent let Greer come all the way across the floor through two screens, set his feet, and then, of course, Jeff knocks it down. 64-63 Hoyas. Sweetney working on right, gets the baseline, reverses, misses, Kent the rebound. That was one of the easier looks he's had. Yeah, that was a good over reverse. Nice Robert Parrish spin move, looking for the foul. Like Kent, a little slap on the elbow might have gone unnoticed, but a good offensive move in the paint. For the lead, yes, that's a three-pointer by Billet. He's got 17. Three three-pointers in the second half, four in the game, and Rutgers is back on top by two. The battle continues. We have had 18 lead changes now. And we touched on it on the open. Georgetown's an inside-out team, and Sweetney has shown you exactly how efficient their low-post game can be, whereas Rutgers is an outside-in team. We saw Jeff Grant knock down the three here. Another excellent job reading the screen. Todd Billet fades to the baseline as the defender tried to go and cheat. Get into that passing lane. He got caught. The cookie jar. His hand was in there, and the ball went in for three. Second half alone, Greer and Billet have combined to score 25 points. So they have been terrific in the second half. Rutgers five of second, five of seven rather, shooting threes in the second half. They were only one of four in the first half. That was a huge difference. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Fortunately for Kevin Bannon and the Scarlet Knights, it's die by the sword in the first half and hopefully live by the sword in the second half. leading by two. Georgetown has the ball. Clock is winding down inside. Five minutes left. Sweeten against Kent. Knocked out of bounds by Kent. Georgetown basketball. 19 on the shot clock. Samnick's jumper over Agzani is too strong, but it kicks up and goes down. Wow. That's eight for Samnick. Well, in an arena like the Rack on the road, you will take one or two free bounces. Samnick happily running back with two points in his back pocket. That is our sixth tie of the afternoon. Sherrod, no place to go, gets it to Greer. Here comes Jeff to the foul line. He knocked down a couple of perimeter shots off the screen. Keep running the screen, but look to, to the big fellas. Billet inside, and he finds Rashad Kent for his ninth point. Seven assists now for Billet. Two-point lead, Knights. Billet and Greer will get all the attention if you take the ball to the hole with the dribble. The big guys will come up and get you as well. Great job by Kent, creating a passing lane and finishing. Burton almost traveled. And wanted the call, didn't get it. Braswell, baseline jumper good. He buried that one. That's 14 now for Kevin Braswell, and we are tied again for the seventh time. So smooth with the ball is Kevin Braswell. Rashad Ken showed off the screen and went back to recover his man, and Kevin just waited for him to go back and knock down the open jump shot. Mike Sherrod with the basketball. Clock winding down to three minutes left. He runs along the baseline and hits a jumper. Wow, what a huge basket for Sherrod. Degree of difficulty unlimited. Blocked by Agzani. The putback by Braswell ties us again. 16 for Kevin Braswell. It's been Braswell and Sweeney against Greer and Bullard in the second half. 70 to 70. Now being hounded by Perry, who's had a huge afternoon. 15 points for Anthony, 10 in the second half. Bullet taking his time, doing a good job. Puts up a quick jumper, bending short, rebound Braswell, a chance for Georgetown to take the lead. Bullet well, looking over at the referee, thought maybe he had the foul on the dribble and threw up the shot. Never hope that the referee bailed you out. Two 
13 to go. Braswell around Axani can't get around him. We're back to Perry. Now Braswell. He'll work on Billet. Samnick in the lane for a jumper. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up. Short. Rebound Axani. Still tied. Rutgers basketball. We're in the final two minutes. Bounce pass to Kim off his foot out of bounds. Belongs to the Hoyers. Tough pass. Did not need it. Takes us to a timeout with 1.53 to go, and we are deadlocked in regulation at 70. Stay with us back after this. And 53 seconds of what has been a very tight basketball game throughout. Neither team has been able to break away, no matter what kind of foul problems the Knights have had, and no matter how many fouls the Hoyas have committed, we're still dead even. Each team did have a six-point lead, but that was in the first half. The difference at halftime was one, and it's been tight throughout. So important to learn how to lose before you know how to win. That's why Georgetown has been able to finish on the tight game. Sweetney from outside. You don't see him shoot from that far away very often. He's got 17 points, and Georgetown is on top. How about the confidence? Down low, steps outside from 16 and buries it. That is officially our 19th lead change of the afternoon. Billet with it right now. Down by two. Sherrod cuts last by Braswell. It'll be night basketball in front of their own bench. 17 on the shot clock and a minute 14 to go in the game. The Hoyas are going to be all over Jeff Greer and Todd Billett. If you run a screen either with the pass or the dribble and you're the big fella, Axani or Ken, get to an open passing lane, you'll find yourself wide open. Knocked away by Braswell and stolen by the Hoyas. A huge turnover by the Knights. Heads up play by Kevin Braswell, contesting the pass coming back out. 19 turnovers, but none bigger than that one right there. Here's Sweetney. Samnick steps around the foul line. Gets it back to Perry. They'll take some time off the clock. 13 on the shot clock. And it's a timeout. Called by the Hoyas of Georgetown. It's a 30-second timeout. Welcome to those of you who have joined us on ESPN News for Big East Basketball from the Rack in Piscataway. And this has been very tight throughout. Right now it's Georgetown by two. The Scarlet Knights just turned it over at their end of the court. And the shot clock, 12 seconds left, 46.4 to be played in the game. Great job by Kevin Braswell. He was the defender on the other end with the steal. And Craig Eschrick just called that 30-second timeout to set up this little guy with a big fella, most likely John Mike Sweetney up top, a little pick and roll. They've got plenty of time, 12 seconds, and then get to the glass. Burton will key the inbounds play, and they find Braswell. Working on Billet, puts up a jumper from just beyond the foul line. It's no good. Maxani has the rebound. Back from the Scarlet Knights. They'll take a timeout as the ball crosses midcourt. Braswell had a pretty good look that time, came up empty, a strong rebound by Axani, so now a chance for the Scarlet Knights. You see, Braswell, that was good old-fashioned student body right. Everybody get to the right of the court. I'm going one-on-one. -on -one. The behind-the-back dribble left him open with the created jump shot just to not knock it down. And there's another good example of how the new rule with the coach, John, can call the timeout. Kevin Bannon did not even wait to have an opportunity for the ball to be passed before he called the timeout and is now going to set up the play to tie or go ahead by one. Well, each team has one timeout remaining. Each team's timeout is a full timeout. Obviously, I've already mentioned it a few times. Georgetown is in the huddle saying, hey, you've got to keep the ball out of Greer and Billet's hands. Put the big fellas in. If I'm Rashad Kent, set the screen and roll and look 
not for the shooter, but the screener down low. Shot clock, 29 seconds. The freshman Sherrod back to the sophomore Billet. Exani with it. Now Billet against Braswell, backs away. Greer pulls up, three-pointer, way short. Burton has the rebound. They need to quick foul, 14.9 to go in the game. And they, he had two defenders coming off that screen. Somebody had to be open. Axani was rolling. A quick shot forced by Jeff, who has had a great second half. But, John, both these teams are not exactly efficient from the foul line. This game's far from over. You take a look at it. Axani standing around at the foul line. you got to get to the rim, create the passing lane. Well, the Hoyas have shot it well today, 17 of 20, and they've made all seven of their free throws in the second half and make it eight. Braswell has been perfect at the line, 5 of 5, and has 17 points. And right now, it's still a one-possession game, but if he makes this one, it changes. And with that in mind, Kevin Bannon is going to take his team's final timeout. And it is going to be a full timeout. With 14.9 seconds remaining in the game. I'm sure the shot by Greer, I think he was probably more cognizant of the shot clock than he was exactly where he was on the court at that time. Absolutely. They had plenty of time. You cannot fault Jeff Greer. He wanted to take the shot. Too much fade from 19 in the air ball. Three-point game. Kevin Braswell is perfect from the line. Still a one-possession game, as you mentioned, if they're able to miss the foul shot and go to the other end. Here's what's left for the Scarlet Knights. They will be taking on Seton Hall at home, and they play at Pittsburgh. That's next Saturday. They've got that return match at Georgetown, and then close against the Providence Friars. What about the Hoyas? Well, we know they've got another game coming up against Rutgers. They will play at St. John's, take on Syracuse, and finish up on a Sunday against Notre Dame in South Bend. So it's not easy, no matter where you look at this time of year. Well, obviously, West Virginia winning this afternoon, Syracuse losing, Georgetown in the middle of this for the second seed. Those three teams are fighting to sit out in the Big East tournament and not play Wednesday. And as we've already touched on, no one has played on Wednesday and won on Saturday. This is going to be a great finish to the regular season. Braswell at the line. Burton, Samnick out there. Boomche, Boomche as well. Along with Perry, who's been terrific this afternoon. This to make it a two-possession game, and they do. Well, Braswell is a perfect six of six at the free-throw line. The Hoyas have made all eight of their free-throws, excuse me, all nine of their free-throws in the second half. So now it's two possessions and less than 15 seconds to go. Here comes Billy. Three-pointer. Off the game. Good. good. One-point game as Billet hits another one, his 20th point, and gives the quick foul. Matter of fact, off the bench, giving the quick foul was Connor Fox. Well, and Connor Fox is getting a little bit of an airfall from Kevin Bannon because the only guy on the Hoya team, John, you don't want to foul is the guy that hasn't missed yet. But how about, hey, let's go down and take a quick shot. Did you call glass, Todd? I heard it. Nothing but glass in that. Seven of 14 in three-pointers after a very slow start. Didn't even take a three-pointer until late in the first half. And Billet has really warmed up. He has five three-pointers, four of them here in the second half. For another 20-point game, that is the 11th Big East 20-point game of his career. And that breaks his brother's record for the most 20-point Big East Conference game. I'm sure they have no idea about each other's statistics over the years, John. No, the, the camaraderie, it doesn't matter. It's coach player. It's not player versus player. Yeah, right. <laughs> 20 points for Braswell. He's been terrific. It's a one-possession game, though. Billet has it knocked away. Braswell comes back, and Greer reaches out, can't get him. He misses the shot. Put back won't go, but the game is over. 76-73. Well, 20 turnovers. They made a couple that hurt him big time in the closing minutes. Kevin Braswell, he deserves all the pats on the back and on the head. Doesn't miss a foul shot and gets the steal. Forces helps to force the steal. Todd Villa trying to do everything he could, John. Just tried too much down the stretch. He had a
a big game, but there's the turnover that clinched it for the Hoyas. They win it 76 to 73. Greer had 18, Sweetney with 17, Braswell had 20. He was a key for the Hoyas in the second half. For Mark Plansky, I'm John Sanders. Again, our final 76-73 Georgetown. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.